What's going on, Cross family? How are we doing today? Okay, we got three one more people time, in the room. One more time. Yeah, one more time. How are we doing today? <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Well, we're so glad you're with us in the room today. Thanks so much for joining us here at Cross Church Online, too. We're so glad that you're with us. You're part of the family. So lean in. We're so glad that you're with us. Hey, listen, if you're if you're new around the, in this place, and we're just so, so glad you're with us, yeah. right? We're so glad yeah. that you're here with us if you're new. Also, as you walked in, you should have received an info guide as you came in the room. In that info guide is what we call our connection card. We'd love for you to fill that out and just swing by our welcome desk in the front lobby, and you'll be able to get a free hot and cold tumbler on us just to say thanks for thanks for being with us so we're so glad you're with us also if you're online with us right now we're dropping what we call our digital connection card we'd love for you to fill that out too we're also going to send a free coffee gift card yes. in the mail to you so we're so excited that you're with us as well that's so good and happy fourth of july weekend yeah. happy fourth of july weekend if you are new or you've been coming around for some while and you want to know how you can get involved with all that's going on here at cross next steps is where you need to be uh, each and every sunday we have it during our 11 30 service so next steps are our fun interactive classes we have around here. Well, you'll get to meet the pastors and leaders around here, and you'll be able to find life, find family, find freedom, and find purpose each and every Sunday. And we will be having next steps next Sunday during the 1130 with a light lunch. You can go out into the lobby, up the stairs, into the next steps room as we continue to have those classes for you. Yeah, it's so awesome. Next Steps is a great connection point. Another way, great way you can get connected around here at Cross Church is through our Cross Church app. It's just a simple way of you getting to know more about who we are around this place. One of the cool things about the Cross Church app is show some of our events that's happening here at Cross Church. And one of the cool upcoming events is our worship night, yes. right? July 17th. Yeah. We've got an awesome worship night happening. And so we want to invite all of you guys to that. We're also going to have some food trucks out in the beginning around 4.30. We're going to have food trucks. And we're gonna have a really great time out and then at 6 30 we'll start our worship time together it's gonna be a powerful night i'm truly believing god's gonna show up in some really cool cool ways so i'd love to invite you if you are if you have kids from zero to five years old we'd love for you to sign up on that app register them as well on that app and then any any of the ages past that they're gonna be in the room worshiping with you so we want to invite you to that check out that app download it and get all the information you need as well yes mark your calendars for that worship night you do not want to miss July 17th here at Cross. Well, we're going to continue our worship through our giving. Yeah. And you have a couple of ways to give today. If you are joining us in the room, you can give in the drop boxes located in our main lobby or in the kids lobby. If you're joining us on our online campus, you can give on the give button that we're putting on the screen right now. Yeah. And you can also give on the Cross Church app like we've mentioned, so make sure you have that downloaded if you have not done so yet. But we're gonna get ready to pray into worship and pray into what God is doing around yeah. here. So if you could all stand to your feet as we get ready to worship. Yes. So thank you, Lord, for being present and available in this moment. Lord, we are seeking you and we are seeking all that you have in store for us today. We love you and we are so thankful for your praise, Lord. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
bit more love than I am right now Wasn't holding you up So there's nothing I can do to let you down It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I feel the fear come Now I won't run away Even in valleys 
Your presence is enough When I feel the shaking I will stand my ground Your presence is enough Cause you are with me And Father you for me And fear will never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus I'm never alone I'm never abandoned And fear will never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus When I feel the pressure I won't run away Even in tension Presence is enough when I'm in the mystery. And I will stand my ground. My God, you are enough. Cause you are with me. And Father, you're for me. And fear will never conquer me. Cause I belong to Jesus. I'm never alone, I'm never abandoned, and fear will never conquer me, cause I belong to Jesus. floods came when the wind blew i was okay you were right there you're in every step i take when the night falls when my heart aches if i stumble you will not come on let me right as one voice singing in the room
belong to him and him alone. I fear will never conquer me. So God, thank you for today. Thank you for your love. Thank you that we can seek you. Thank you that on days like today, you reign, you're sovereign. It is your goodness, it is your power, it is your, your love, your grace that we look towards. You have been our shepherd and our provider. And so God, remind us, remind us of who you have been Give us eyes to see who you are and speak to us today. Help us to know you. 
We pray these things in the powerful and resurrected name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Thanks for singing with us. Y'all can have a seat. Well, hello, Cross family. How's everybody doing today? No, we weren't ready. How is everybody doing today? Come on. We serve an amazing God. And we can't just come in here being quiet knowing who our God is. So whether you're here or you're there, I hope and pray that you have the opportunity to encounter and connect with Christ in this place because I know more than anything that he wants to connect and encounter you. Can we just lift up and celebrate our worship team in this place today? Oh. They are so amazing, whether they be here, our production team in the back, under the leadership of Pastor Tyler. Do you know how hard it is to get us into the presence of the Holy Spirit every single Sunday, every week? They come and they take us to a place of serenity where we can walk and experience the love and the peace of Christ. And you don't know, maybe you're not like me, but I know when I come in here sometimes, some Sundays, every once in a while, I come with my worries from last week, my anxieties about what's coming up. I'm mad about the argument I just had. I'm fussing at the kids in the car. And when I come in this place and the worship team is up here and they're praising and they're, and they're walking us hand in hand into the presence of, of our Father. And I sit there and I say, nope, I'm not ready yet. And they say, no, just let go. Release, God is in this place and you can just see him here singing and praising. And I'm standing there, you, you know. Nope, still mad, I'm not ready yet. And they're telling us that Jesus is in this place. Do you know that they can't take us to a place that they've never been before? Leading us into the presence of the Father. And I'm like, no, not yet. It's a spiritual tug of war. They're pouring their hearts out to Christ, presenting us right to the presence of the King. I'm like, no. And then after song number three, oh, you know, you know, when you get there, Oh, and, the, and you're in the presence of our Father, and it's just so sweet. The presence, there's a serenity, the fear. You just get to that place when nothing else matters. I finally forgot about last week. I could care less about next week. I love my wife again. I'm in a place. We're happy. The King is here. I said, can we just be honest with family? And then Pastor Tyler will come back and he say, all right. You can have a seat. And I'm like, no! I, I don't want to sit down. It took me three songs. <laughs> yeah, I just, hey, when, when I get up here, I'm just going to be real. I, I, I personally, I put in my vote to extend worship. Because it takes me some time to get there. But when I get there, but I just wanted to take a moment and celebrate them for what they do. You... You don't know the time and the effort and what they put in to getting us to this place and how hard it is to pull us into the presence of Christ. But they do it in excellence, and I'm just so happy for their heart and their obedience and them doing what they do. Amen. 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 Wow. Well, if you don't know me, I'm Pastor Cornelius. I'm my adult pastor here, and we are knee deep into our summer series, Mark, the Bounding Lion. Y'all like, come on. I practiced all week on that intro, man. And that's all y'all got? Come on. Wow. Well, I can tell you, man, if, you, if you've missed any of our services over the past several weeks, don't worry, I'm going to catch you up. I'm going to give you the Cliff Road version because it's important that today, we're all on the same page as we move forward. So as we look, as Pastor Josh opened up the summer series, we're talking about Mark. And in the book of Mark, it portrays Jesus 
as a roaring, bounding lion. Now, there are other portrayals of Jesus in the other Gospels, but particularly in Mark, we're looking at Jesus as a roaring, bounding lion. And the reason for that is, one of the reasons, is because when Mark starts to write, he immediately starts to talk about Jesus as an adult. You don't see Jesus, him talking about Jesus as a kid, as a carpenter growing up. None of the stuff as a child. Jesus just pops on the scene like a roaring, bounding lion. We immediately see in the book of Mark that when Jesus enters the picture, we're in the desert. He's baptized by John the Baptist. Then he begins his ministry. And the roaring, bounding part is Jesus going from place to place performing miracles. It almost seems like it's just effort, effortlessly or carelessly, but it's extremely strategic as Jesus is going from place to place carrying out his ministry. And then we look at it, Jesus starts in much like a lion, one of the first thing that he does is establishes his pride, his family, his life group. You'll see that immediately in Mark, he starts and he goes and he selects his disciples. The group of gentlemen that he would do life with, that he would pray with, that he would teach, that he would set a legacy and show them how to carry out the ministry long after he's gone. We see him establish his pride. And then Pastor Jana came last week and he, she took us where we actually started to see Jesus as he roars and he bounces, bounces around as he begins to perform his miracles. We start to see where Jesus is going place to place, healing, touching, playing, miracles are happening. And it, 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 we just see Jesus going all over the land with his disciples, with his life group, with the people that he were doing, doing life with, performing miracle after miracle after miracle, carrying out his ministry. And that gets us to today. Now, we have to understand the context of where we are and what's going on this time. See, we read the Bible and we see, we get to read it all at once. We can go from not knowing Jesus to knowing Jesus and believing in him instantly because all the words are there. But at this time, you have to understand that following Jesus was probably not one of the most popular things to do. In fact, in fact, there was a ton of confusion surrounding the name of Jesus. See, some people believed in who he was. Some people knew that, hey, this is Jesus. Some people had made the commitment to follow saying, hey, that this is the Messiah, but there were still so many doubters. In fact, the Jewish leaders were questioning who he was. In fact, it said that they sent spies to go out and investigate and sit in when Jesus taught to hear what it was he was saying. His own family didn't quite understand and know who Jesus was. In fact, in fact, some of his own family went to, got to the point where if they even thought he was crazy. You know, like that crazy cousin that you, that's at the family reunion that nobody's talking to? See, y'all not laughing because that's you. You're the crazy cousin. But you know, it, it, it's that person where you, you just can't say too much. It's like, not this Jesus person at this point, even if you wanted to follow him, there was so much confusion around his name that you're like, ah, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I believe he's the Messiah, but if I go out, if they see me there, if they see me in the audience, they don't think I'm crazy too. So even if I believed in Jesus at this point, I still didn't have the heart to make 100% commitment to follow him. Yeah, people were beginning to follow. People were beginning to come out, but the word wasn't totally out. He was still going place to place, and then many times, this was the first time that they ever had the opportunity to hear or see Jesus speak. So think about this. The Jewish leaders in Mark 7, 1, even questioned his authority. It says that the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, circling around him. And we, we hear many instances in the Bible where they would question him or throw things out to try to stump him or make him say something that he shouldn't say because they didn't fully trust and believe in who he was. Even his family. Mark 6, 1. The people from his hometown, the people that Jesus grew up with, didn't quite understand or believe who Jesus was. In Mark 6, 1, it says, he went away from there 
and came to his hometown. His disciples, his life group, the, the group of gentlemen that he established early on, his pride, they followed him. And it says, on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? They even went so far to say that, isn't, isn't he a carpenter? Isn't that Mary's son? See, what you have to understand is that sometimes you're going to have to leave the place where you grow up for, in order to become who God has created for you to be. We see that even with Jesus. See, the people in the circumstance where you grew up in, they can't see the new you because all they know is the old you. Even Jesus went back to his hometown and nobody truly believed who he was. Let's look at it this way. It's summertime. How many people got plants and flowers and like to water flowers? Anybody? This is a participation part. A lot of us. I, I know it's you because I've seen you at Lowe's and Home Depot. I've seen you. Yeah, you know. So we go and we get these plants and these flowers, and when they come, they come in a flower pot, bucket, right? But the pot that the flowers are in at Lowe's and Home Depot is what we would call a nursery pot. That pot was designed specifically for that plant to grow to a certain place. But in order for that plant to fully develop, we have to take that plant once we get home, take it out the pot, and put it in an environment where it can grow. An environment where it can reach its full potential. Somebody came here today looking for a word name. What should I do? That's your word. That's a message for another time. But I'm telling you that sometimes you can't grow and become who God created you to be in the place where you grew up. And that's right in the word. We see it even with Jesus. Even his home, these are the people that's supposed to be for you. Isn't he just a carpenter? Man, <laughs> y'all in that, you listening to Mary, son? There was confusion around the name of Jesus. Now think about this. We know that the Jewish leaders questioned him. There was confusion around who they thought he was. Now we know that his hometown and his family questioned him, didn't believe that he was truly who he was. <laughs> wisdom, where did you get this wisdom? Who's giving him that? But not only that, think about the group of individuals that he hand-selected. It just said that they followed him to his hometown, his disciples. They followed him Everywhere that he went, they seen him perform miracle after miracle after miracle. In fact, it was at this point that they had just seen Jesus multiply the fish and the bread and feed thousands of people. They get on the boat. They get in the lake. They get to a tough spot. Anybody ever been in a tough spot in their life? What did they do? they began to question who Jesus was. These are the people who were just walking hand in hand, foot for foot with him. They get into a difficult situation and everything that they've seen and known is now out the window. Mark 4, 41. This is the disciples in the boat on the lake after seeing Jesus perform miracles in the middle of a storm. They were terrified. And they asked each other, who is this? Confusion. Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And this is specific to them going through a storm, knowing, knowing who Jesus was. So we see the, we see the confusion. We, we see that so many people wanted to follow Jesus. We even see that people knew who Jesus was and still questioned him, right? And we get to the point where he's saying, you know what? All right, Jesus, I'm in. I seen you perform some miracles. I went. I seen the lady touch you and she was healed. Eh, I know people think you're crazy, but not me, right? This is me. This is me a thousand years ago. Not me. I'm in. I'm going to follow you. I, I don't care. I'm coming. And in fact, I'm telling everybody, hey, Jesus is coming to coming. He was in Alpharetta yesterday. He was healing. He was touching. But he's walking to come, and he's coming up 400. He's going to be at Cross Church. Come with me. 
Let's go see Jesus, right? I'm in. I'm all in. I get there, and what does Jesus do? He starts with the parables. Now, if this is me, I'm like, Jesus, come on, man. I brought everybody here, and now you're speaking in circles. Now, nobody's going to believe me now anymore, right? Now, let's put this in context. Mark 3, 4 says, Jesus asked him, this is him speaking in parables. What is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil? Jesus, what does that even mean? See, we, we, we don't laugh because we've had years and years and years to look at the parables. We've heard preaching after preaching. We've heard biblical breakdowns. This was the first time that they had ever heard Jesus speak, and he's speaking in circles, doing only what Jesus can do, not only making him look crazy, but making me look crazy, and everybody's looking crazy, but I want to trust you. I want to follow you. And then he goes into another parable, Mark 8.35. For whoever shall save his life shall lose it. But whoever shall lose his life, for my sake and the gospels, they shall save it. It's easy for us to take those parables and say, hey, you know what? I know what I believe it. I know what that means. They had no idea what these parables meant at the time. If we take these parables into the context of the time, I'll prove it. It says that any time Jesus spoke in parables, guess what the choir did? They were quiet, just like you guys. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Every time Jesus spoke in parables, they were quiet. They were stunned. What do I say? Here I am. I brought my family. We're in this place. Jesus is about to show up. We've been waiting all this time. The miracle worker, this is the man. And he gets up and starts speaking in circles, only like Jesus can do. Ah, Jesus? Come on, man. They were quiet. But can I tell you something? When you're truly connected to the king, you just can't keep quiet. When Jesus has done some things and made a way, you just can't keep quiet no more. What happened with the man that he healed of leprosy? And we can find this story in Mark 1, It says that Jesus healed him he touched the man and healed him, and he gave him a stern warning to do what? Don't go tell nobody. Whatever you do. Listen, Jesus at this point, while everybody else did not have, they were still confused. They were on the, they were on the fence. Do I follow him? Is he Jesus? Is he the Messiah? Is he the king? Jesus knew who he was the entire time. He knew who he was. He knew his purpose. He knew his destiny. He knew his timing. So by him telling everyone to be quiet, don't go tell anybody, he was working in efforts to prolong his ministry. He knew that he still had work to do. And as the time, as the word got out, time ticked down. So he tells this young man that he heals of lepers. He says, hey, I'm going to heal you, but whatever you do, man, don't tell nobody. Some of us would say anybody. I'm going to say nobody. Don't tell nobody. And what did he do? It says immediately he went out and began to talk freely. When you're connected to the king and he's done some things in your life, I, just, I, I, I can't just sit here and be quiet. I got to tell somebody. I got to tell somebody about Jesus. I got to tell somebody he's a miracle worker. I got to tell somebody he made a way. I just can't keep quiet. See, the people when he spoke in parables were quiet because they didn't know. They weren't connected to the king. But when Jesus touches you, like he did the man with leprosy, you just can't be quiet anymore. And I get it. Some of us are here. We're in a place and a point where we're still believing for that miracle. Right? We're in a situation or a circumstance in our life where we're still waiting for God to be a healer personally to us, right? And, and that's okay. We get to a point where, where our faith, we believe God. We know that he's Jesus. We know that he's a miracle worker. We just, we just have a little trouble with the faith that he do it for me. And people say, no, I got the faith. No, you don't. It says that you just need to have enough faith as a 
mustard seed. You know why? Because God knew that every time in every situation, you're not going to have the faith to believe, and that's okay. You're in a situation, you're in a point in the place where you're saying, God, I know you're a miracle worker. I've seen you do it before. I've seen you. I've seen the woman reach out her hand and touch you when she was instantly healed. I know, I know you're a healer. I've seen you, mul- I've seen you multiply. I, I, I know you're a provider. But I just don't know if you'll do it for me. I'm believing every day. I, I just don't know if, you're gonna, if you'll do it in my life. God, forgive me for my little faith. I, that's all I got. I'm going to eat. If we can be honest in here, you get to a place sometimes where you're just like, God, this, I just got a little bit. I know who you are. I'm not doubting who you are. I just, I just need, I need to see you do it for me. And then there's two or three of us in here that God has showed up. He's got you out of some situations that you would have never got out of on your own. He's made a way. When every door looked like it was closed, he showed up. There's been some time when the bills were behind, and Jesus did only what he can do. Can I tell you that when you are connected to the king and you know him personally, I don't care what everybody else says. I just can't be quiet anymore. I got to tell somebody. Because you're in a situation and you believe him. Can I tell you that he did it for me? When you're connected to the king, I just can't be quiet. I just can't keep quiet because I know who he is. Who is he to you? Right now, in this moment, in your personal situation, even though you may be, we came in last Sunday and we prayed for miracles. Even though you may be waiting, who, who is he? Who is he? Is he sitting? Is he still Jesus? So here Jesus is, bouncing around from place to place like the roaring lion that he is, healing, performing miracles, breakthroughs are happening. And it says that they were on their way, he and his disciples, his life group, the guys that were following him from place to place. Remember those guys? They were on their way to Bethsaida. So he gets to Bethsaida. And it says that the people of the town brought a blind man to him and begged Jesus to heal him. They brought a blind man from the town because they knew Jesus was coming to coming. We got to meet him. They brought a blind man there and they begged Jesus to heal him. How hungry are you for your miracle? It says that they came. <laughs> it says that they came. They brought the man to him. And now they didn't just say, hey, Jesus, touch him and heal him. I can just see him down on their knees saying, Jesus, we know who you are. Would you heal him? And what did Jesus do? He touched him, healed him, and sent him on his way, right? No. That was the participatory report, and you failed miserably. (laughs) You got to think, every other time up until this point, Jesus was touching and healing and sending people on their way. Jesus was so bold that sometimes he wouldn't even touch. He would just speak, and miracles would happen. But this time, it says that Jesus took him by the hand and led him out of town. (laughs) If I'm the blind man, Jesus... No, I'm right now. We've come all this way to see you right now. Just touch me, right? I've heard that you've been touching people. Where are we going? Right in the gate. I'm here. I believe. I trust you. Just heal me. But it says that Jesus took him by the hand, walked him out of town, and then what did he do? He touched him, he healed him, and he sent him on his way, right? No, now we're getting it. I'm on a roll up here, man. I'm having fun. I get it. I'm losing credibility, but I promise we're going somewhere. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going somewhere. I promise you. So it says that Jesus takes the the blind man out of the city. Because remember, he's still trying to prolong his ministry. 
He's still trying to perform many as miracles as he can. He's still fulfilling his purpose, but he knows the more that people see and hear and do what he does, that his time is ultimately going to come to an end. He knows, he knows the beginning from the end, right? So he takes the blind man out, and Mark 8.22 says that they begged him to touch him. So Jesus not touches him. And what I want you to understand about this situation is that this is one of the first times that we see this in Mark and one of the, one of the first times that we see in the Bible where Jesus actually uses spit to heal. It didn't say like other instances where Jesus spit in the mud and mixed the mud. It says that Jesus spit in his eyes and he touched him. And then what? He was healed, right? No, and you guys are still not participating. You, 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 you're worried. You don't want to be tricked anymore. This is one of the first times in the Bible that we see that Jesus actually performs a miracle and it didn't work on the first time. Can I tell you this? Whatever situation you're in, wherever you're at right now, there may, there just may be a little bit more misery before you get to your miracle. There may be just a little bit more hard times before we get to where God has taken us. See, this blind man came and he trusted Jesus. Jesus, you're a healer. I'm putting all my hope into you. Here you are, you're leading me out of town. You're taking me out into the countryside. Here I am in front of all these people. It says that Jesus spit on him, touched his eyes, and he asked him, what do you see? You know what he said? Everything's blurry. I see men walking around like trees. Now, first and foremost, you've been blind all your life. How do you even know what a tree looks like? But second of all, you're going to be in a situation where you come in here and you pray and people are looking. People see you believing on God. People see that you're believing for a breakthrough and you know that your miracle is coming. You're going to get up and you're going to walk out those doors and things are still going to be blurry. You're going to walk out there and it may just be a little bit more misery, a little bit more trouble. You're going to pray and you're going to go and you may still be behind on your bills. You're going to pray and you're going to do everything you can from the job and you're not going to get that call back. You're going to pray and believe God for healing and they're going to say that the cancer came back. But even in the midst of you waiting on your miracle, Jesus is still Jesus. So you have to understand that when he performed this miracle, we like to look at the word of God and we like to just read right through it. Oh, Jesus touched him, spit on him, he healed him, he said it's blurry, didn't he? No. This took time. You know how? Because Jesus said, what do you see? And it had to take enough time for him to walk around and look and try to test his vision. We're going to pray and we're going to believe and we're going to go out and we're going to say, all right, God, it's time. And he's going to say, nope, not yet. Not yet. Ima Can you imagine how this blind man felt? Jesus, you came and took me from my hometown. You led me out the city, hand in hand, foot in foot. I'm following you. I'm trusting you. I'm believing for a miracle. All these people that brought me are following us, not only to see you perform your miracle, but to see if I'm going to get mine. You get me out here. You spit in my face. You touch me, and I'm still not healed. I just got to believe that he was just in a little bit more misery than he was when he left the city. But during that time, while Jesus waited and Jesus allowed him to walk around and see the blurry men walking around looking like trees, Jesus never changed. Jesus was still Jesus. He was still a healer. He was still a miracle worker. He was still a provider. His miracle had just not come yet. Here he is with spit plastered all over his face in the midst of who knows how many people waiting on a miracle. But all it took was just one more touch. It just took one more touch of God. It says that Jesus then touched him. Now, now we're there. He was healed. 
it just took another touch. See, while we're waiting on our miracle sometimes, our faith tank depreciates a little bit sometimes, if we're honest. We get to a place and a point where we believe Jesus, we know who he is, we know who he is. But I just feel like, God, you touched me. You promised me that you'd make a way. You gave me your word. But I go out and it's still blurry. Can I tell you this? He's still Jesus. Right here, right now, wherever it is, whatever it is that you're going through, he's still Jesus. He's the same. People see you praying. They see you believing. They see you trusting. But it's still blurry. Okay. Can I encourage you that just one more touch? Just one more touch from God. But while you wait, wait knowing he's still Jesus. See, at this point in Mark, this is what a story takes to change. This is where things begin to shift. So it says that Jesus continued his journey. He's continuing to heal and touch, and he's performing miracle after miracle, only like the roaring, bounding lion could, right? But it says that they're heading towards the next city, which happens to be Caesarea of Philippi. Now, what you'll have to understand about this city is that the city was known for serving many pagan gods. And this would be the most fitting place for Jesus to make his final revelation of who he really is. It says that as they were walking towards the city, and we know that there's a ton of confusion around the name of Jesus, right? Some people say he's this, some people say he's that, some people say he's a carpenter, some people say he's Mary's son. But Jesus turned and he asked the disciples, but you, you, who, who do you say I am? Right now in your situation, who is he to you? This Jesus person. No matter what you're going through, no matter what's going on, I, hey, I know it's tough. It's flat out hard sometimes. But who is he to you? Mark 8, 27, it says, who? Jesus asked him, who do people say I am? Is that this place that our roaring, bounding lion becomes the prey of the parliament. Over the next couple chapters, you'll start to see Jesus begin to pronounce and proclaim who he is and eventually predict his death over three different times. It's at this point where he begins to refer to himself as the son of man. It's over these next few chapters that we see him head to the top of the mountain with a few of his disciples on his side to be transfigured where his disciples would see the revelation of who he truly was. See, it's at this point in the story where Jesus makes the shift and starts to walk towards the cross. Ultimately, defined everything on earth for us to know who he truly was. We know that Jesus lived. We know that he died. We've read that he went to the cross and he died for our sins. But like Peter, I would just love to know who he is 
to you. Who is he? In the midst of wherever you may sit in this moment, who is he? Is he a miracle worker? Is he a provider? Is he a healer? Is he a restorer? Who is he? We know Peter's answer. <laughs> it says Peter looked at him and he said, you're the Messiah. You're the king of kings. But we got to make a decision on who he is to us. Wherever this moment may meet you, wherever it is that you are right now, who is he? Can I tell you who he is to me? There's no uncertainty. There's no doubt. I can tell you that he's the king of all kings. He's the bread of life. He'll make a way out of no way. He's a restorer. He's a comforter. I'm telling you, whatever it is that you're going through, he will be there. He said that he will never leave nor forsake you. And what I can tell you is that no matter how big your situation is, our Jesus is enough. He's more than enough. He was enough yesterday, today, and he will always be enough. Maybe raging. 
You may be in the middle of a mess, but let me tell you, there's hope today. You know what that hope is? Your miracle is in the works. Your miracle is in the work. And so some of you need to receive that today a little bit. Some of you need to know in your heart, in your mind, in your soul that your miracle is in the work. So it may seem like you're in the middle of that mess, right? That storm may be seriously raging. That fear may be all around you. That disappointment may be all around you. But today your miracle is in the works. Can you receive that today? Can you receive that? It's gonna be a powerful, we're gonna hear some amazing testimonies of what God's gonna do. I feel it in this moment right now. God's got some, got some miracles in the works and I'm receiving that for myself too. So we're so glad that you guys are with us today. Can, can I just take a moment and, and just pray over you guys as you, as you leave today? As, as you do walk out, we've also got our deacons and, uh, and some of our pastors at the crosses. So if you need a prayer, you need specific prayer for that miracle. You need specific prayer over something in your family, in your life, we'd love to invite you. Go over to them and they would love to partner with you in prayer. But can I pray over you right now one more time as, as, as you guys walk out today? God, we thank you. I thank you for this day. Thank you, God, that, that you are, are a God that, and that you are enough. That, God, no matter who we are and who, you, who other people say, God, you say that we're enough as well. And so, Jesus, we trust in you. We put our hope, we put our faith, we put our joy all in you because you are enough. We give you praise and we give you glory for all that you've done today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, you guys have a wonderful day. We love you. Take care. What an incredible message that we got to experience together today. We know and believe that no matter where you are, God is present and he's speaking specifically to you. If you recently gave your life to Christ, we'd love to take a moment and celebrate this life-changing decision. We'd like to partner with you on this journey and it's really easy. If you click the raise hand feature, we'd love to personally connect with you because we truly believe that no one should have to walk this walk alone. There are also many other ways that you can jumpstart your journey. Next Steps is your way of getting plugged in right here at Cross Church. See, our Next Step courses are fun, interactive, and you'll have the opportunity to learn our heart, the culture, and the DNA of us right here at Cross Church. Our Next Step courses happen right here at Cross Church each and every week at 11.30 a.m. And we would love to see you here so you can be a part of everything that God is about to do. Thanks again for joining our online family today. We're so excited to worship with you again right here next week at Cross Church.